Hi, I'm Kezia, a brain injury survivor and a BIND member, and welcome to our new episode of BIND Waves. And hi, I'm Carrie, a stroke survivor and a BIND member, and we welcome you again to our newest edition of BIND Waves. Today is What, what is Physical Therapy? And we have invited Christy with Baylor Frisco to join, be our guest. A little bit about Christy. She is a volunteer therapy dog trainer. I don't know if I'm saying that. She'll help us figure that. And a physical terrorist. Oops. I mean, a motivational (laughs) physical therapist. Um, So welcome, Christy. We're glad to have you here today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Welcome to Bind Waves, the official podcast of the Brain Injury Network of Dallas. I'm Brian White, Bind's Executive Director. On each episode, we'll be providing insight into the brain injury community. We'll be talking to members and professionals regarding their stories and the important role of Bind's Clubhouse. We work as a team to inspire hope, community, and a sense of purpose to survivors, caregivers, and the public. Thank you for tuning in to Bind Waves. Let's get on with the show. I guess our first question is, tell us just a little bit about you, and then what made you decide to become a physical therapist? Well, I'm, my name's Christy, and I've been a PT now for 24 years. Wow. Seems like a long time. Um, you know, it's not to be corny, but I always wanted to do something to help other people. I knew I wanted to be in the medical profession, but I didn't want to be a doctor, didn't want to be a nurse. So I knew there were so many things out there in between. I just had to explore those options. And so I could not do a desk job. Um, and I knew that physical therapy had a lot of options, um, you know, working with kids to adults, everything in between, all different settings. So I knew I'd um, have job security and also be able to, to, I wouldn't get bored. We'll just say that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So one of the main questions that we received from our subscribers, from the, one of our members, is what is the biggest difference between a physical therapist and a trainer, like a body trainer? A personal trainer, yeah. Yes. So physical therapy um, is a licensed medical profession. We are considered allied health professionals. And a personal trainer, um, there's a lot of different um, certifications. Um, You can do a weekend class and be certified as a personal trainer. And um, currently, physical therapy is now a seven-year degree. It's, um, you have to get undergraduate. And then it's a entry-level doctorate program. So it, the programs now are 33 to 36 months after your undergraduate degree. And it is, again, an entry-level um, doctorate degree. But it is licensed. It is a licensed profession. Wow. That's awesome. That is. Okay. Yeah, and sorry, right before I started the question, I'm amazed by meeting you. <laughs> yeah, it was so, so thank you, seriously, thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. Pleasure to be here. Okay, well, um, you kind of answered all my questions in that question, which is good, <laughs> it's fine. But so I'm going to just kind of jump in. So what, what makes a physical therapist? I mean, what do you do? What's physical therapy? Well, we are, um, as a profession, and I'm going to just put a plug out there for the American Physical Therapy Association, um, just to put that out there, APT.org has a lot of information um, if you're interested in careers as a physical therapist, if you're interested in research, um, looking for a physical therapist and as a specialty, um, depending on what you need. So we... um, regardless of what the setting is, regardless of the diagnosis of the patient, we evaluate a patient, we look for, um, and within our evaluation, we do special tests, and we look for impairments um, or injuries. Sometimes it's pretty easy. Somebody will come in with a, a, you know, low back pain, you know, working in the garden too long on Sunday and um, or twisted an ankle, stepping off a curb, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but anything up, up to you guys know intimately what a physical therapist does. So um, we do our evaluation. We look for impairments, and we use an exercise program. We use hands-on um, interventions and sometimes different modalities to assist patients gain mobility, gain strength, gain their balance back, regardless of what their deficits might be. Okay, great for, thank you for the explanation about um, physical therapy. But being here at BIND, Brain Injury Network, I wanna make sure like, how does the work that you do as a physical therapist, like really exactly for brain injury survivors? How does that work? Yeah, so um, 
in where I work now, I work in a day neuro program, and all of our patients have had an acquired brain injury. So that is, like you all, it's something that's not progressive. Um, it can be a stroke, a traumatic brain injury. It can be a hypoxic event, like following a cardiac event. Um, we can have patients who have had brain surgeries for tumor resections. So in that case, our patients have more neurological deficits. So from a stroke, we may have more hemiparesis or hemiplegia on one side of the body. So we're very familiar with that. Um, and so we can help those patients or traumatic brain injury. We can have more global injuries. We might have spasticity we're dealing with. But again, it's decreased range of motion. It's decreased independence with just day-to-day -day activities. Um, some of our patients are very high level, so we're walking independently, but we can't quite do the things that we used to do. So maybe we have children to care for. Maybe we want to go out to the soccer field with our kids or play, you know, rec softball with our church league. So we help those patients specifically with more neurological deficits um, and including up to balance activities um, and very... Some are very complex. You know, we're not limited to just, okay, can you stand up and walk? We're able to get the patients working towards independence in the home and the community. Yeah, I think that right now, as you were saying that, that's definitely connected to both Carrie and I. Mm -hmm. Like, we both had a stroke, but different. We had different... Um, different areas. Their areas that got different really deficits. affected. And I think that was really good that you were saying about how, like, depending on their limits and all of this... For me, I used to be a runner, so mm -hmm. the loss of my balance, and that was crazy for me because I used to run marathons, and yeah. it was just like, so when I met my, my physical therapist, that was like what we talked about. I was like, I just want to run a marathon in like three months. Like, yeah, that was impossible. <laughs> but ideally, that's what I would have loved to do, and I had a great physical therapist to focus on that specifically, and I know Carrie mentioned that too in one of the videos. Yeah. It, it is, and I guess that's probably from the neurological standpoint from a patient that comes in. We come in still thinking about the old us, and right. like Kezia said, I was a marathon runner. Our car, okay, he was a runner. I want to run again. That's all I want to do. Mm -hmm. I, he couldn't stand, much less walk, you know, much less, he couldn't walk or stand, right. much less run. Um, so I guess kind of how do you work towards making a, neuro, a brain injured person realize that they need to set realistic goals on so you know we work if if the patient has a goal then that is our goal it doesn't mean that we're going to be able to focus on that goal right away but we have a long-term big picture goal we have short-term goals let's stand up on our own and then we want to walk on our own knowing that the ultimate goal for that patient might be higher level activity and i you know i never want to you always want to work with the patient. I tell a patient this is being done with you, not to you. They're part of the team. And we, I will be realistic with patients. And, and, you know, if something might not happen right now, that doesn't mean it's never going to happen. Um, probability versus possibility. Um, so those are things, it, it, and it can be tricky. We are fortunate that we have an entire team, um, and our program includes counseling. Um, but we're all very supportive of our patients. We do a lot of education um, with our patients to talk about just neurological recovery, brain injury effects, and those types of things. So, uh, you know, I never say never. Exactly. Thank you very much. You're welcome, because some people have been told you're never going to do this, you're never going to do that. Um, and, and I never say never. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thank you, Christy, for all of your information. So, after explaining about what is a physical therapist, can you like kind of detail a little bit more about brain injury and how to work with brain injury survivors into their physical therapy? Yeah, neurological injury is a little bit different than maybe an orthopedic injury. So we're going to have the deficits are coming from the brain, from the central nervous system. So those deficits are a little bit different. We may have weakness on one side of the body, um, hemiplegia or hemiparesis. We may have more global um, physical deficits that are on both sides if there's a traumatic brain injury. So we, we still do our complete assessment, um, but our approach is a little bit different with our um, interventions. They're um, neurological based, so we do a lot of neuromuscular re-education. We promote um, 
improved movement patterns um, versus, and there's a difference between the hemiparesis and just weakness. Um, and spasticity is also something that is very typical, um, very common after brain injury. So we address those issues and more of the mobility issues in the majority of our cases, such as standing and walking and balance, um, and sometimes even just mobility at a wheelchair level. So it's not just strengthening an ankle if you've stepped off a curb wrong. Okay, great. I think that um, in previous... That's really distract. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I think that right now while you were talking about your different... Um, what you focus on a different patients or different, yeah, different patients, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, different patients uh, as survivors, brain injury survivors. I was wondering, like, it was very different for me to be learning about physical therapy because I thought that physical therapists would immediately focus on, like, my history, like, learn about me and, like, what did they know about me because, yes, I needed to learn how to walk again, but I also, like, wanted to focus specifically on running, making that my next goal. So how did you work with patients like about that? Because I think um, Carrie had talked about it at one point in the video before um, about how like you just wanted to move. Well, you just yeah, wanted to leave. I mean, pe yeah. I, yeah, I wanted to just get up and go. But guess what? I couldn't stand up to yeah. get up and go. And, you know, and I remembered the old man was very active and ready to go and ready to go. And, yeah, what do you do with those patients that come in and go, well, I used to be able to do this and I want to be able to do this by next week. Let's get going. But I'm, oh, by the way, yeah, I can't stand up and I have an alarm on my chair to make sure <laughs> everybody knows if I try to stand up. Yes. So how do you manage expectations? Because it looks different for a brain injury. Absolutely. And, you know, our patients, we're doing therapy with our patients, not to our patients. Mm -hmm. And we're a team. And so we look at the patient and we do history. We ask what's important to the patient? What kind of hobbies do they have? What kind of responsibilities do they have at home and in the community and with children? So the ultimate goal is maximum independence. Um, if the goal is to run and we can't even stand up by ourselves, then we break those, those tasks down. We are encouraging every day, supportive every day. Um, we allow for success, we allow for failure. Um, and sometimes, you know, insight is, is, is knowing what your strengths and deficits are. And sometimes with a neurological, you know, with a brain injury, the, that area of the brain sometimes is affected. So we think we can get up and just mosey on forgetting that our leg doesn't quite work the way it used to. Yeah. I think they told so, me that was called impulsivity. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, a, that's moving before, yes, you're assessing the situation. Um, yeah, so that, that's really what we do. We break it down. We, uh, you know, we work on goals together, ultimately. And I never say never. Um, you know, but I do, I, I talk, I'm realistic. I talk about probability. We do a lot of brain injury education. It's different. It's different. And I tell patients, this may be your first brain injury, but it's not our first brain injury. Mm -hmm. So we have a big support system to help, to help through that. So maybe besides the obvious, we'll talk about wheelchairs and walkers here in a minute, but besides those obvious, what other kind of assistive devices are there for people with mobility problems. Yeah, so in the therapy setting, we have equipment that is um, more supportive, um, bigger, heavier, um, more expensive, and used in a therapeutic setting. So these things are used in therapy to get patients up and moving. We may not be able to use a walker because we don't have that good use of one side, so a walker is not really feasible, but the patient's not stable enough for a cane. So we also have body weight support. We have harnesses that we can support the patient and hold them up, whether we're actually taking weight off or just holding them up. Um, we have something called standing frames that allow the patient to get the weight bearing. That helps work on core strength. Um, so going back to some of those basic things of just standing. You know, we have parallel bars. Everybody in Brain injury rehab has worked in parallel bars. We know that, but that's not feasible for home use, really. So we that's what the therapy is. You know, we use those things in the clinic that are more supportive and offer more stability until we can get to that point um, that they can use a lesser assistive device. Okay. Right now that you were talking about devices, mm -hmm. um, some of our subscribers actually did put some lists of 
what becomes more what they hear about or what they probably actually use. So um, they asked if a cane would actually mean that they're going to have to need it for forever. A cane or a wheelchair. Does that mean that once you get it, you're like ne- never going to let it go? And I know you said never is never. But right. <laughs> I mean, the goal, We, you know, we joke that too bad we can't, you know, just burn wheelchairs. You know, nobody wants to be in a wheelchair. So we work on um, pr- progression and transition. Um, I, I never... Um, Say never, but I always, again, it's promoting that maximum independence with the least, we call it the least restrictive assistive device. And then there's the point where maybe someone is independent at a wheelchair level and they're walking with assistance. So in the program, we allow the patient their independence in the wheelchair, but then we might take it away for a couple days so that they have to walk between sessions. We, we have trained staff so that we can, again, work on those, those steps, that repetition. We need the repetition. If you can walk 20 feet from your bed to the bathroom, that's great, but that's not real functional. But if you need to go in your wheelchair and you're independent, that's good, then you don't need help. So there's that, that transition. Um, and, you know, some people may need wheelchairs just like, you know, if they want to go to trade days or go to the mall or something like that. Or they use their wheelchair mostly, but say we want to go out to eat. Well, we can walk from the car into the restaurant. <laughs> That's easy. So there's always that transition. So there, it may be you don't need a cane at home, but if you're going out because of balance or because of fatigue or just because other people don't watch out for you, mm-hmm. you know, and you need that stability just, you know, just in case kind of thing. So um, the goal is independence and whatever that looks like. And we like, and, you know, we don't, we want our patients, we want ever, all their survivors to know, to be, to be independent and look at something like a walker or a cane as allowing you to do those things, not holding you back from doing those things, if that makes sense. So, yeah, so it's, it's not a never, it's not a always, it's, you know, it's whatever works in the moment and what's your goal. Yeah. It's always and that was, what's your when goal. When I got rid of my cane, that was pure independence to me because of my, I won't say it right, Henny Right, blah, blah. Paresis. Yeah, I mean, More paresis. Paresis. <laughs> um, I was excited when I was able to put the cane away because then I could go open the bathroom door by myself. Yep. That was that was independence. I was like, I didn't have to ask somebody, will you please walk me to the bathroom and open the door for me and then wait for me. Right. So, right. yeah. And, and we call, if you have an assistive device, we call that modified independent in our terms. So you're not needing help physically but you do have an assistive device again just for that stability but yes canes don't just stand up on their own right and just because you use one once doesn't mean you need it for the rest of your life correct as you get older you might need it again but right but you know so what um i know another one of the things that a lot of our member subscribers were asking us about was pull or lake therapy how does that help strengthen or does it is it different than the other devices you were talking about is yeah, so aquatic therapy um, basically is it's a whole nother um, specialty. And getting in the pool, um, especially following a neurological injury, is so good because it unweights you. It allows for movement, and it, it can just kind of help decompress and help you relax. It does work on strengthening because the water offers its own resistance, but the buoyancy also holds you up and supports you. And so if you think about... We'll just use the arm because it's it's easier. But if you have a little bit of strength in the arm, but you can't really move it too much against gravity, Mm -hmm. you get in the pool and it's floating. And then all of a sudden you can move it a little bit. And so that movement allows for active range of motion, which is which can be strengthening. So pool is great. I mean, I always recommend if anybody's getting in water following an injury to have someone with you, of course, and have supervision. Um, And if you're in a lake, great get some floaties you know life fest but the water can be very healing very healing well i i wish i would have gotten in the pool <laughs> <laughs> but i was in chicago and it was freezing yeah. so no 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 pool please no <laughs> well, you pool. don't do it by yourself <laughs> right yeah um something else that did get brought up um was just about the home check like obviously once you're an inpatient you're in there obviously having all this help all the time then you become outpatient, but half the time you're at home. So how does that home check work or what is that about? Because I think a lot of subscribers don't know what a home check Mm -hmm. is. So we, you know, we call them home evaluations. And if the goal is to go home with your family, then 
um, sometimes those things, just discussing those things, what is safe in the home, thinking about doorways, can you get a wheelchair in, do you need a ramp, um, do we need grab bars, um, Again, some of those things can just be done verbally or with pictures. In some cases, a home eval from a PT or OT or both um, to take the patient into the home with the family members um, can actually work on some of those home skills. But the, the checklist, a home evaluation is for safety and mobility. Can you get in and out of the house safely? Can you get in and out of bed? My bedroom's upstairs. Well, okay, what are our options? Because we can't do the stairs right now. So what room can we set up downstairs? Mm -hmm. Do you have an accessible bathroom downstairs? If not, do we really, do we need to tear down some walls? Is that feasible? Can we just take the door frame out? I mean, there's so many things. It's not an all or nothing. Um, and there's always adaptive equipment. Um, but that, that's basically what that is, to make sure that the patient can be as independent as possible in the home and to decrease what we call decrease the caregiver burden um, so the patient can do as much for themselves and it's easy on the caregivers because we all know that caregivers can, it can be a challenging situation to be in. Absolutely. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you something that we've kind of already asked or I think we've covered. Mm -hmm. But while we're doing that, I would like to ask our listeners to please click that like button. <laughs> and But no, it's something that I think a lot of even non-brain injured people don't understand because they're not brain injured and they everybody knows what a physical therapist is but nobody really understands that there's a specific physical therapist just for brain injuries i mean that you specifically only work with brain injury survivors i do at this point yes and also have a um, neurological certified specialist which means that I've shown proficiency in working with brain injured patients or neurological patients in general. Um, and that's been the majority of my career. I've been um, at Baylor for seven years and at my previous job, I was there for nine and a half years also working with neurological um, acquired brain injury okay. patients. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just, I, sometimes that's the thing what I'm trying to point out is that office care therapy is not the same Correct. just because you had a broken leg and you've gone to physical therapy it's not the same as when a survivor has to go to physical therapy i'm not saying it's harder or easier it's just totally different totally different and in our and in our profession we have the ability to specialize so we do have orthopedic specialization we have women's health special specialization um sports specialist women's pelvic health not just women's health anymore it's pelvic health um, so there's a lot of different specialty areas geriatrics um, vestibular so that's um, if any of the listeners are looking for a physical therapist um, look for the specialization of that if um, you're interested you wouldn't want to come to me <laughs> if you if you broke your leg um, you know I, I can work I can, I can work on strengthening some of our patients, especially if they're TBIs from, you know, traumatic injuries. They're going to have orthopedic injuries as well. Um, so, yes, we, we do treat the full person, um, but you also don't need my expertise for some of those generic orthopedic or something that we're not quite sure about with the ankle, and we want a specialist there as well. So it's just as important, but it's just very different. Yeah. So I just wanted to click on a little bit. Mm -hmm. So through our conversation, you're like super motivational, but really how do you work with brain injury survivors that have these really difficult injuries? How do you motivate them? How do you work with them? How does that happen for you? Um, you know, I try to make it as fun as I can being a physical terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> and one of our, one of your, your members um, has given me a whip. <laughs> and so we get a lot of, I get a lot of uh, interest with that at work. But, um, you know, I try to remember that you guys, you know, when you come to me, you're looking to me to help you. And I'll be real with you. And there's going to be some days that are not fun. There's going to be some days when you're just done. And that's understandable. And you know what? We can just go for a walk. That is functional. That is working on that endurance. You know, there's going to be some days when we're tired. So we're going to take it down a notch. There's going to be some days you're on fire and we are going to work work <laughs> it hard. So every day is different. But seeing, you know, bind is just amazing and i love coming here and i love seeing you guys um so you you guys are why we do it 
Well, and that was going to be my next question. <laughs> how did you hear about Vine? And how? what, what do you do with this, other than this wonderful podcast? Yeah, so um, at my previous position, uh, you guys, we had a group when Bind was young, when Bind was, was, was just a baby Bind. <laughs> um, some of your uh, members came out and did some education and peer mentoring with some of our patients. And ever since then, I mean, it's just something that goes – that falls in with what I do and what my passion is and I love going to the gala every year and you know we're that's on October 22nd yes at Austin Ranch something like that in Allen I'll get it right next time (laughs) (laughs) but October 22nd check our website thebind.org and you can get all the information you need (laughs) and I already put it on my calendar (laughs) Um, but I've come and done some guest speaking in the past some fall education fall prevention education Um, so just like to support you guys and, and, you know, the peer mentorship is so amazing. The things, you know, you, I haven't had a stroke, I haven't had a brain injury, so I can empathize with my patients and work with them, but I can't say I exactly know how you feel Mm -hmm. because I don't. So just knowing that you guys are a resource to our patients, um, and, and I love it. And I think it's amazing what y'all do. Well, Christy, thank you so much. We are so happy that you were here with us today. Um, We know that you work at Baylor Frisco, um, but there's also Baylor Downtown. You can check out the Baylor website for possible support groups for brain injury survivors or maybe any other thing that you might need and look for those specialists as well. And I'd also like to shout out to our listeners and subscribers. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe or backwards, you know, whatever. Y'all know what I mean. But we would love for you to like us, subscribe. You can find us at thebind.org. Our Facebook page is Bind. We also have an email, bindwaves at thebind.org. And we are available on pretty much all listening podcast services that are out there. Pick your favorite one. Just skirt search for Bind Waves and you will find us. Hit subscribe and you won't have to wait for the next time. But thank you for listening. And again, Christy, thank you for being here with us thank today. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks thank you. for inviting me. It's been me. a great time. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed listening to Bind Waves and continue to support Bind and our nonprofit mission. We support brain injury survivors as they reconnect into the life, the community, and their workplace. And we couldn't do that without great listeners like you. We appreciate each and every one of you. Continue watching. Until next time. Until next time.